As we get older, our parents impart valuable life lessons to us, such as the need to always look both ways before crossing the street, watch the stove, and conserve money. Since you're watching this video right now, I'm going to presume that you've mastered the first two, but the third one could still be up for debate. This is why I want to provide you with 5 simple strategies for saving more money that I'm sure will have your bank account bursting with cash in no time. But before that, if you're new to this channel, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. So without further ado, let's get started. First method, dominating your domain. What do your wealthy neighbor and you have in common? You need a place to live as fellow humans rather than some bank accounts. Maslow's hierarchy shows one of humans' most fundamental physiological needs is shelter. Since most of us overestimate what having a place to call home means, housing has become one of the most significant barriers to saving efforts. Every time I talk about saving money, I stress the need to consider your three main expenses carefully, housing, transportation, and food, which together make up around 60% of your budget on average, with housing being the most costly item. Your ability to handle your housing expenditures, which makes up 30% of your annual expenses, will determine how well your financial condition turns out. Sadly, the majority of people typically manage this cost wrong. You are aware that in the culture we currently live in, everyone wants everything to be larger, faster, and newer. Over 2,600 square feet is now the usual size of new homes, increasing over 1,000 feet from just 40 years ago. Larger families, however, have the right to defend against this increase in house size. In actuality, during the previous 40 years, the population has decreased from 3 to around 2.5. As a result, using some simple math, we can see that people nowadays frequently have over 1,000 square feet to themselves, as opposed to the median need of 533 square feet for one person to live in 40 years ago. No doubt extending houses is expensive for people whether it's because people have become bigger over the past 50 years or because they just need more space for all the stuff they buy. The median price per square foot of a home in the US is $123, with homes nowadays being a thousand square feet larger. With higher property taxes, maintenance, and a larger commission check when you eventually decide to sell your house, this adds up to more than $100,000 for purchasing a home. What then is the solution? Don't do that, like ordering a Big Mac after a night out at 2 in the morning. Instead of focusing on how much you can flaunt your mega mansion, which will keep you impoverished till you die, while buying a house, think about your genuine needs. Alternatively, if you already own your home and pay rent, Monitor how much of it you use and decide whether the amount of room you have is required. It could be best to relocate or rent a room to minimize your living space. Second method, move cheaply. Have you ever picked someone up at the pub to bring them home only to regret it the next day? When you believed it was a good idea, it nearly seemed like you didn't know what you were doing. Unfortunately, we feel the same way when we get a fantastic car and decide to pay the astronomically expensive transportation costs that come with it. I'll be the first to admit that I adore driving top-notch vehicles. It makes me thrilled to think of having a brand new sports automobile, so I can see why so many others do. But as my first excitement fades, my analytical thinking and logic take over. I'm conscious of the fact that generally speaking, I'll never buy a luxury car. What is this concept then? First, the money spent on cars is wasted. People frequently estimate how much it would cost to purchase a new, unused automobile. 
they figure out the price difference by the fresh car smell. Unfortunately, once they discover that a new car would typically cost them $17,000 more than a used one, sadly, this is just the beginning of the costs. So consider your means of transportation carefully if you're serious about saving money. Increased depreciation, more significant maintenance costs, and higher insurance rates. The list goes on. Come with buying a new automobile. I'm not going to sit here and urge you to cycle everywhere. Even if the majority of people could use a bit more exercise, that's not practical for 99% of people. Instead, I advise purchasing an excellent used automobile to save money on insurance, which is already exorbitantly priced, and to minimize sticker shock and depreciation charges. It will be easier than you ever thought to save more money after the excessively priced cars are gone. Third method, have cheap fun. Do you remember how much fun it was to play with your pals on the playground equipment at the park? Except for the times we fell off the monkey bars or got stuck midway down the slide, they were pure joy for us as kids. Unfortunately, as we age, we usually lose the ability to enjoy life's essential pleasures, which makes having fun much more expensive. For instance, having your friends around to watch a movie turns into a $300 club night, or a picnic becomes a weekend vacation to Vegas. It seems that as we age, enjoyment becomes more and more expensive. However, it significantly impacts how much money we can save when we do that. In my opinion, the average American spends over $3,000 on entertainment annually or around $250 each month. This amount may not seem like much to some. But it may make all the difference in someone's ability to avoid future debt or perhaps start to get out from under it. Now, I will not advise you never to spend money on entertainment again. But even if some of my most memorable experiences required some financial commitment, I want you to become more aware of ways you may have fun without breaking the bank. I've found that some of my most affordable interests are also some of my most rewarding ones. By asking my friends around to see a movie or go for a stroll instead of spending hundreds of dollars at the club, I can have the social time I need without becoming broke or being inebriated. Once you realize that you can have fun and save money simultaneously, you'll get addicted to having fun on a budget. Fourth method avoid interest. I don't know whether you've seen it recently, but millions of people are actively burning their money right now. And no, there aren't any matches or lighters involved, unlike what you would assume. Since you are spending your hard-earned money on a party and getting nothing in return, paying interest is almost always the same as burning your cash. You'll notice that I said in virtually all circumstances, since while it could make sense to pay interest on obligations like business loans or mortgages, you should proceed with caution when dealing with high-rate debts. If you want to have a chance of saving money in the challenging economic environment we presently find ourselves in, you need to avoid using your credit card as much as you can. As Dave Ramsey reads what I'm going to say, I practically hear him groaning uncontrollably. Since the average interest rate on credit cards is more than 18, most people who get into a spiral of credit card debt pays hundreds of dollars a month in unnecessary fees. It is absurd to work a full day just to increase the wealth of your creditors. I don't oppose credit cards just to be clear. I have a lot of credit cards that I use regularly, but I make sure to fully and promptly pay them off each time. So how do I go about doing it? It's easy. I never spend more money than I have in my bank account using my cards. I appreciate my parents giving me wise counsel. A credit card may be a fantastic instrument for improving your credit, collecting incentives, and obtaining buyer protection for your purchases if you are financially aware. Here is a method you might employ if you're looking for more savings to reduce your debt as quickly as possible. 
First, sort your loans by interest rate, starting with the highest rate. Next, pay off the obligation with the highest interest rate using as much of your available funds followed by the debts with lower interest rates. The Dead Avalanche Approach Another name for this debt reduction strategy has proven to be the most cost-effective way to pay off debt. If you're wondering, doing this should come before investing or saving money. Your return from canceling an 18 credit card will be more than your returns from most investments and undoubtedly more significant than your returns from any savings account plan technique. Fifth Method Earn More Money When it comes to saving money, the adage the greatest defense is a good offense is false. Making more money as long as you don't spend it all will benefit your savings efforts more than all the other advice in this video. So, where did I learn this? I know it will work for you too since it has already worked for me. As I previously stated, most young people learn early about the value of saving money, and I was no exception. My parents instilled in me the importance of being thrifty and saving money. And that's it for this video. Before you go, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and click the notification bell for more videos like this. Thanks for watching and see you next time.